I don't know if you guys are sensing it, but I feel like as we get closer and closer to fall, sales are finally picking up. Won't nobody love you the way they should. Won't nobody check up on you, make sure you're good. Won't nobody check those body tendons by your neck. Hi everyone, my name is Becky Park and I'm a part-time reseller on a variety of different reselling platforms online, such as Poshmark, eBay, Mercari. You're actually gonna hear me talk about a ton of them in this video because I actually sold on a ton of different platforms. And when I am not selling clothes and shoes and accessories online, I am a full-time high school choir teacher. And for me in the state of Illinois, school has started. We're on like our second or third full week of school already and I'm finally kind of getting into my groove. I was exhausted for a bit because I don't know if you know this but like for teachers to start teaching after a summer off it just takes a while to get back into the swing of things. So I'm finally kind of getting there really enjoying my students and my classes this year really excited for acapella so lots of great things on the horizon including better and bigger and more frequent sales and so I'm really excited to share with you the sales for Eight, what is this August 8th through the 21st so we're gonna be talking about two weeks of sales again and then hopefully getting into just one week's worth of sales um, they're still not where I want them to be I'm still definitely under when it comes to my numbers as far as what my goals are for myself but I'm definitely feeling better about the kinds of sales that are coming in and even since you know these weeks that we're gonna talk about in the video like for example right now we're in September we just finished the first week of September um, sales have continued to pick up and so I'm hoping that that's the trend. I also am trying to do a few more different things to try to spark some more sales. And, you know, if you want to see if those things are working, definitely make sure that you hit that subscribe button so that you can see future What Sold videos to see if sales are picking up. And if you're excited to see what sold for me in these two weeks of August, make sure to hit that like button and let's get into it. So we're going to start by talking about Monday, which was August 8th. And I was like, well, we're in for just a rough time because August the 8th started with zero sales. No, God! Across all platforms. No, God, please, no, no! So it was looking kind of ominous. No! But we quickly got into Tuesday, which was August 9th, and the sales started to pick up quite a bit, especially on eBay, which I was very excited to see because that is a platform that I'm trying to grow and just be more consistent on hoping that it'll bring me more consistent sales. So the first thing to sell was from one of my newer, like, favorite bread and butter brands, which is Lauren Ralph Lauren. It's a brand that I would pass on a lot in my first few years as a reseller, but only recently have I really started to see the value of this brand. So for example, this was a gray leather strap lambswool poncho cape situation. It was a one size fits most or fits all. I actually got this in a bulk women's thread up rescue box for $2. That was my average cost of goods for everything in those boxes. And I was able to sell this on offers to watchers for $64.90. That is a used piece of clothing selling online to someone else for 65 bucks. That's pretty good. And so my profit, once you factor in, you know, eBay's fees and once you factor in my cost of goods, that total comes out to $50.73 that I was able to pocket from that sale. Not too shabby and it was very welcome after a $0 sales day on that Monday. Um, you know, that particular Thread of Rescue box it was like very mixed, but there were actually a few really big winners like this item. And yes, this item has been listed for a few months. It honestly has gotten a lot of interest. Um, maybe I had it priced a little high, but I think I had it priced at like 75. Like I said, I sent out that offer for $64.90 and someone accepted. So with an item like that, I'm willing to wait a little bit to get, you know, top dollar for it because I know that there's value there. I know that it's worth it. And that's exactly what happened. So the next sale was this vintage Lily Pulitzer green lime citrus print A-line skirt in a size 8. This one I got in a wholesale palette that I had purchased from a fellow reseller. So my average cost of goods per sellable item from that wholesale palette was $3.92. This item sold after, again, like a good amount of interest for $22 on eBay. And so once you factor in eBay's fees and my cost of goods, I profited $14.65. So to end the day, um, I sold this pair of Polo by Ralph Lauren, another really 
really great brand to resell. Um, this pair of reversible swim trunks in a men's size medium. They had a five inch inseam and they did have some spots on them. These actually belong to my husband and he's like, I don't wear these anymore. So you can go ahead and list them. And so I did right at the tail end of when people are typically buying swimwear. Um, they sold for $10 and to be honest, they actually sold that same day on Poshmark as well. So I had to cancel the Poshmark sale, um, keep this sale, and I made a profit of $9.36. So it was interesting because that Tuesday, all three items that sold were items that I didn't necessarily like source myself to resell. They were things that were either sent to me in thread up boxes or in wholesale pallets or just given to me by my husband, but I still made money on them. And you know, that just goes to show like, even if things are not necessarily your cup of tea, not things that you would pick up yourself, if you list them, they will sell. And sometimes, like that Lauren Ralph, Lauren Poncho, they will sell for good money. So moving on to August 10th, which was Wednesday, the first thing to sell was another item that I didn't necessarily pick out, but it was this vintage Driplets. That was the brand. Driplets by Whippet Kids. It was this floral raincoat. It was hooded, and it was in a size 3T or 3 toddler. This thing was like... It, it was the kind of exterior where like when you walked, it would just like squeak. You know what I mean? Like as the fabric like brushed against itself, like it was very old school, just very like, eh, 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 eh. I don't know how else to explain it, but this actually got a decent amount of interest as well. I actually had people reach out from YouTube when I did the haul video of the inventory that I bought out from this local reseller, um, but none of them actually followed through. And so I ended up selling this on Poshmark for $17. I had a dollar and two cents into it from that local reseller buyout. And so I made a profit on that raincoat of $12.58. This was a fun piece, so I was really happy to move it and, you know, get it into a new home. On eBay, I sold this Chaps Ralph Lauren, so yet another, you know, sector of the Ralph Lauren universe. Um, it was this striped long sleeve polo shirt in a size 24 months. That was actually something that my son wore. Um, I listed it and sent out offers to watchers for $11.90. Um, and so I made a profit of $8.58. So I think that was actually given to us for free from someone, just like a nice little hand-me-down, which was really cool, and then we turned around and made money on it, so that was great. The next thing to sell was this White House Black Market 3 fourth sleeve purple button-up cardigan in a size extra small. That was something that someone from my church gave to me for free. Um, it sold via Offers to Watchers, again, for $11.90, so I made a profit of $10.25. The next item was, again, Ralph Lauren, but this was like Ralph Lauren for real, not Polo Ralph Lauren, not chaps or anything like that, but it was Ralph Lauren and it was this blue classic fit performance flannel button down shirt in a size small. This sold for my full asking price of $29.99, which made me very happy because if you've been watching my channel, you know that I hate selling button up shirts. So I was happy to like have gone through the process of listing one despite how much I hate it and seeing it sell for as much as it did. This I got in a thread up rescue box, a men's rescue box. So my average cost of goods for those items was $3. So my profit on that button-up shirt was $21.50. The next sale was a great one. It was this new with tags, Stop Staring by Alicia Estrada. That was the brand name. I had never heard of it, but because of just everything about it, I picked it up, took a chance on it. Obviously, I looked up comps before, but it was this green cadet dress in a size large. It just had this very retro look to it, but also just looked really cool. So I saw this at a pop-up consignment sale and was immediately smitten. Like I was like, I have to take this home with me. It was kind of expensive from what I remember. Like I have written down $16.75 is how much I paid for it, I guess. Um, but it sold on eBay via global shipping program, mind you. So it sold overseas and someone paid a fortune to have this shipped to them. It actually went to the UK, but it sold for $115. I don't remember if that was an offer. It must have been. It must have been an offer that I received, and I happily accepted it. So I made a profit on that dress of $80.94.
if you see something and you don't recognize the brand, but it just looks really nice, it looks well made, bonus points if it's new with tags, definitely look it up, run the comps. That's what I did with this piece. And I was rewarded handsomely for it. The next item to sell was this MNG Mango Basics Tan Faux Fur Lined Hood Winter Coat in a Women's Size Small. This sold for $39.90 via Offers to Watchers. So this day I sold a, like, what is it? Three items through Offers to Watchers, which was really exciting because typically I send out a ton of Offers to Watchers and it's crickets. But this I only had 80 cents into because I actually bought it two years ago at a local consignment store when they let me shop in bulk by myself in their storage unit. And I was just shoving things into these big black garbage bags because that was the deal. It was, I would fill up a garbage bag and I would get to pay, I think it was like $50 per bag. So, I mean, I got so much stuff, thousands of pieces because this was during the height of COVID when businesses were not open and people were not going out. And the only reason I did this was because I was shopping literally by myself in this space. And so as a result, I made a profit of $33.37 on that item. However, I had it listed for way too long. Like I said, it's been over two years. I'm happy to finally move it. I think the issue is that I just had it priced way too high to begin with. I think I had it priced at like $75 or something, um, but I kept dropping the price and finally let go of it for 40 bucks and I could not be happier. So moving on to Thursday, which was August 11th, the first thing to sell was this Victoria's Secret VSX Sport Front Zip Bra in a size 32B. This was something that I kind of bought off of my friend. Like she, every once in a while, will bring me some clothes that she doesn't wear anymore. I'll just kind of give her a price for the items. And I had about $5 into this as a result. It sold for $20. I made a profit of $11. The next thing to sell was another really great sale on Poshmark. It was this Monty's, don't know if I'm saying that right, by Wilson's Leather Brown Lined Jacket, leather jacket in a size large for men. This I sold for $75, which was my full asking price. I have also had this listed for a long time. I actually got it at that same um, consignment store where I shopped in bulk for 80 cents, but I think the sale was made because of relisting. So on Poshmark, they have this newish feature called copy listing where you can literally press the button. Like once you go into edit listing on Poshmark, if you scroll all the way down, there's a button that just says copy listing. And what it'll do is it'll create a copy of that particular listing. However, you have to make sure that you delete what says copy at the beginning of the new listing title um, so that you know you don't have that random word in your listing because no one is searching for the term copy, if you know what I mean. But I had maybe a few days earlier copied this listing and deleted the old one using Posh or VA. You can do that in bulk. You can do like, I don't know how many at a time. I think I do like 45 at a time, which is really nice because you just click the button and then your Posh or VA extension just starts like relisting a bunch of listings um, and you don't have to sit there and do anything. And so that's what happened. And then a few days later, I made the sale full price and I made a profit of $59.20 on that. Only took two years and, you know, it being relisted, but finally I made the sale. Could not be happier. The next thing to sell was over on Kittizen. This was a pretty exciting sale. It was this pair of Spanx high rise ankle raw hem boot cut jeans. It was like this ombre pair of jeans where at the bottom it was like the darkest wash and then it kind of lightened up as you went up. I've actually sold the same pair of jeans before from Spanx. So when I found it again at a local consignment store, I was definitely willing to pay up for it because I knew that it could do pretty well. So it sold for $58 on Kittizen. That is with free shipping. I think it cost like $8.95 to ship them out. Um, I had $21.99 into these, which is a lot, but I knew that they would sell and I knew that they would sell pretty fast. And so once you factor in my very high cost of goods and the fact that I paid for shipping and Kittizen's fees, I ended up making a profit of $20.67. So almost doubling my money. I probably could have held out for, you know, like a better offer somewhere else and not had to pay for shipping and all that kind of stuff. But it was a really quick sale. Like I think they had been listed for under a week. And so I was happy to make the quick flip and just kind of move the item and get some money in. I was happy with that. The next day of sales that we'll talk about is August 12th, which was a Friday. On eBay, I sold another button-up shirt. It was this Charles Terwitt 
don't know if I'm saying that right. Blue non-iron slim fit button up dress shirt in a size 15 and a half. This sold for $20. Um, I had $3 into it because it was in a men's thread of rescue box. So I made a profit of $12.33. This is the Lord's way of telling me, I don't care if you don't like it, list it, even if it's a button up shirt. So I get it. The next thing to sell, I don't even really remember these shoes very much because they sold so quickly. So I think maybe like that Thursday, August 11th, I had released a haul video of stuff that I had picked up at a birthday sale for a local consignment store that I love. And after uploading that haul, I got a bunch of messages from people on Instagram of people wanting to purchase items from the haul, just, you know, directly uh, through me without having to go through a platform. That way, you know, we could both save since I don't have to pay for fees and I could offer them a cheaper price so they save. So the first thing to sell as a result of that haul video was this pair of New Balance shoes. I think they were men's. I think they were Velcro strap. Like I said, I don't even remember and I'll have a clip of me um, showing those shoes from the haul, but I sold them to Rose. So Rose, thank you. I sold them to her for $30. Um, I had $2.52 into those shoes because that's how much I paid for them at the consignment store. Shipping was $9.94 and there was like a little tiny PayPal fee. I forget what the PayPal fee is. I want to say it's like two or three percent. So I ended up making a profit of $16 on those, but I didn't have to photograph them or list them or anything. Like she just saw them in the video and I shipped them out to her and I was very pleased to do that. So Rose, thank you so much. The next day of sales that we'll talk about is Saturday, August 13th. On Poshmark, I sold this pair of Talbot's blue and white seersucker striped Bermuda shorts in a women's size 16. These sold fairly quickly for $29. I had them listed for $35, but they sold for $29 via an offer that someone sent me. I had $4.92 into them because that was my average cost of goods for that particular trip to the consignment store that I got these at, and so I made a profit of $18.28. I mean, you already know how much I love selling Talbots, and it's for this reason. Even for a pair of shorts, sometimes you can sell them for $29. The next sale was a great sale, and it was this Rebecca Minkoff Beige Magnetic Clothes Crossbody Bag. This one sold for $55. Now, maybe like two weeks before this, maybe a week or two before this, um, I actually did a whatnot sale with my friend Melanie. She has recently lost a ton of weight because she's getting married in, oh my God, she's getting married in two days. I have the honor and privilege of singing at her wedding, and I also have to like... Um, run her rehearsal because her wedding planner isn't going to be there. So I'm kind of stressed out thinking about the coming days, but she's getting married in a couple days. She has lost a ton of weight. And as a result, she had all this clothes that she just needed to get rid of. So we held a whatnot sale with her clothes. It was really fun, but she gave me some things that I was like, I think these would just be it would be smarter for me to list these items. And it was a couple bags and like some bras, like stuff like that. So this bag was hers and I told her I would give her some of the profits from it. So um, I'm saying that I had $17 into this and my profit was $27 from that bag. The next two sales were direct sales from, again, that um, haul that I uploaded. So the first direct sale went out to Enos. I don't know if I'm saying you're right. If I'm not, I'm so sorry. But she purchased this pair of Crocs from me. They were these black slip-on Crocs, like your typical slip-on Crocs. I want to say they're the Katie style. I could totally be wrong. But I sold these to her for $22. Again, I had $2.52 into them. They were very cheap to ship out. And so I made a profit of $14.34 on those. Online, I would have probably sold them for like 25 to 28 dollars but that's also what the buyer paying for shipping so you know again she was able to save because I covered shipping and I charged her less for them than I would have charged online and I saved in the sense that I didn't have to give like 10 to 20 percent in fees to any reselling platform I was able to just pass on those savings to Enos so thank you again Enos I hope you love them and I hope that they're super comfy the next and final direct sale that we'll talk about from um, that haul video went out to Myra she got these echo flats Again, I don't remember very much about them because I, they weren't in my possession for very long. I didn't photograph or list them or anything, so I don't even remember what color they are.
but I sold them to Myra for $28. Um, I had $2.52 into them from that haul. I paid $6.12 to ship them out to her. So I ended up making a profit on those of $17.89. So Myra, thank you so much for your support. And I hope that you love those flats. The last day of sales from this week, and then we'll talk about one more week, like I said, was Sunday, August 14th. I actually had sales across four different platforms. So Thank you, List Perfectly, for allowing me to cross list super quickly. If you were looking for a tool to help you cross list, um, List Perfectly actually does a lot more than that. It also helps me manage my inventory and do a lot of other kind of like bookkeeping type things. Um, if you want to try out List Perfectly yourself, I do have a code down below that you can use to save 30% off of your first month. But the first platform that I sold an item was over on Poshmark, and it was this pair of Judy Blue boot cut high rise jeans in a size 31. Judy Blue jeans for me typically sell between that $30 to $50 range. So I'm usually happy to pay like $10 to $15 for them. These sold for $40. So right in that average price that I get for them. I picked them up at a local Goodwill for $8.99. And I was happy to do so too because they were in a bigger size. So I made a profit of $23.01 on those. On Mercari, I had two sales. Um, the first one was this Nike Dry Fit Live Strong Black Short Sleeve Athletic shirt in a size medium. This one sold for $19. It was in that wholesale palette, so I had $3.92 into that, and I made a profit of $12.33. Nike Live Strong, Nike Pro, Nike Golf, these are all like very good bread and butter Nike brands or Nike sub brands. I won't pay very much for them because they'll typically sell, depending on what the item is, in that like $15 to $25 range. Um, but if I can pick them up for cheap at like the big or even like at a you know consignment store when they're doing like a sidewalk sale or something I will I don't think that I would pay four dollars for them the way that I did for this but again they came to me in a wholesale palette I just got what I got and listed what I had um, and I'm still happy to make that twelve dollars and thirty three cents of profit but I would not have paid that much at a regular thrift store the next item was another bag from my friend Melanie. This was a great sale. It was the Mark by Mark Jacobs Too Hot to Handle Satchel Purse or I don't know. I don't know what you would call this. Purse, bag, satchel. There's so many names for bags these days. But I think the color was called like cement and it was in this beautiful leather exterior. So this sold for $100 on Mercari. It sold super fast. Again, within like a week or two of being listed. I'm saying I had $35 into this because that's how much I'm giving my friend Mel. I'm just literally like for her wedding gift going to just add the amount that I made from these sales to how much I was going to give her in the first place. So I made a profit of $51.80. On Depop, I sold this pair of vintage Crazy Horse Liz Claiborne black pleated tapered pants in a size 25. These truly are the type of thing that I feel like would only sell on Depop. Like, I just can't see them selling anywhere else. I list them everywhere else too. Like, I'll cross list them everywhere. But these were exactly the type of thing that I said to myself as I cross listed them to Depop you're gonna sell on Depop, and they surely did. So these sold for $32. I had $3.92 into them from that wholesale palette, and I made a profit of $19.11. I'm honestly pretty shocked that <laughs> these sold for $32, and on Depop, that's with free shipping, because I think that's kind of somewhat standard practice on Depop. Let me know if you charge people for shipping, but I do offer free shipping and that's why my actual profit on that was probably a little bit lower than you were expecting, but man, I'm happy to move those for as much as I did because those were in the donate pile for a while. I just thought to myself that I didn't want to take the time to list them. I'm glad that I did. On TradeZ, of all places, and TradeZ was actually recently acquired by, I don't know how to say it, Vestier? Vestaire. It's like another kind of luxury reselling platform online. I personally have not heard the best things about this platform. If you have any experience with Vestaire, Vestaire, let us know down in the comments. I don't know. I've just heard kind of bad buyer experiences. So I don't think I'm going to make the jump over to Vestaire. So I think I'm just kind of done with like luxury or high end reselling platforms because I don't find a lot of those kinds of pieces to begin with and I'm okay getting rid of a platform. Um, but 
before Tradesy turned into a different platform, I was able to sell this pair of Michael Kors blue medium wash sailor jeans in a size four. They had like those very, again, sailory kind of like nautical buttons um, on the front and they were a capri length. They sold on Tradesy for $50. That was with the buyer paying for shipping. I had $5.99 into these at a local Goodwill. And so I made a profit on those Michael Kors jeans of $40.23. I cannot tell you how many pairs of Michael Kors jeans I have passed on in my years of reselling because they just do not resell. But these I picked up because they were so cute and because I looked up comps while I was inside Goodwill and noticed that this particular pair of jeans sold for a high dollar amount and the sell-through rate was great. There were very few listed and while there weren't like that many solds either, like there were more sold than there were listed and that's why I knew that this was going to be a good piece to pick up. They sold very quickly within two weeks of being listed um, and yeah, $40 profit. Love it. Love to see it. So this first week of sales that I just talked about, I sold 19 items for a net profit, so this is after all the fees, after all my cost of goods, net profit of $495.69. It's still like half of where I want to be, but it's better than the weeks that I've been talking about where I've made like $200, $300. To get close to breaking $500, I will take it, especially as hopefully a foreshadowing of better things to come. So the next week that we'll talk about is August 15th through the 21st. If you've been watching my videos, you know that the 15th is the real, real day. It's like the day that I get my payout from the real, real from the month before. Payouts have been getting sadder and sadder. And to be honest, I think I'm done with the real, real. It was a very short lived experiment. I was excited to try it out and I had some very early success with it. Like some stuff sold for a really good amount of money, but it has very quickly gone downhill. The main reason being that they changed their payout structure again, so you're making even less for items that sell for like $50 or less. I don't know. It just, it, yeah. I, so I actually emailed my rep and asked her like, how do I go about getting all of my stuff sent back to me? Because at this point, the things that they have left have probably been there for a while. So they're selling for like $25, $30. And these are things that I think I could sell myself for $25 or $30, but I'll make much more money on those items than the real real is going to pay me out. So I'll talk about the real real here in a second. I also had a whatnot sale. So this was a big day for me this Monday, the 15th. First, let's talk about my Poshmark sales. I sold this pair of Converse All-Stars white lace-up sneakers in a men's size 7 or a women's size 9. For Converse, I will put both you know, men's and women's sizing, just in case there's a man who's interested or a woman who's interested. I don't want to like discriminate against any of the genders. Um, these sold for $17, which I was totally fine with because they were pretty dirty. They were pretty beat up. I actually got like a three-star rating because of item cleanliness. I took a picture of the shoes in the exact state that they were in and in the exact state that they were going to be shipped to this person in. I don't know why they were surprised by their cleanliness, but I don't really care either because I got paid, but I sold these for $17 that was with discounted shipping because that was a Posher VA sale, which means that about five minutes after the item was liked, Posher VA sent them an offer for me with discounted shipping. Um, I think I do like 15% off offers. And so after the shipping discount, after my cost of goods, which was $3, I made a net profit of $8.88, which is not very much. This is why I don't pick up a lot of Converse because I just don't have that much luck with it. It never sells for that much. I never end up making that much profit. I leave most Converse behind now. Um, if you are interested in trying out Posture VA, this is another tool that I use on a daily basis. I will have a code for that down below as well in the description. And with that code, you can save 20% off of your first payment on Posture VA. So moving on to my next sale, it was this J McLaughlin, which is a brand that I love. It is so expensive retail, super preppy. Um, it was this beige three-fourth sleeve collared button-up shirt in a size medium. This one I sold for $25. I think Jay McLaughlin can typically go for more, but this was like not the best shirt from them. Like it just, I don't know, like for Jay McLaughlin, this didn't seem super high quality for some reason, but it still sold for $25. I had $225 into it from a local consignment store when they were clearancing it down. And so I made a net profit on that top of $16.03. And that was another one that I think sold really fast. 
The next item to sell did not sell very fast. I've had these for a long time. I want to say close to a year, if not more. It was this pair of Banana Republic Fulton stretch chinos in a size 33 by 30. These sold for $21 with discounted shipping because of Pasha VA. I made a profit of $15.08. I think I got these for free from a friend at church. So, you know, they were listed for a while, but it was pure profit. So on the real reel in the month of July, and I'm talking about July because I get July's payout in August, I sold one, two, three, four, five, six, seven items on the real reel. And I got a payout from the real reel for those seven items of $60 and 15 cents. They gave me less than $10 an item. And some of these items were good. Like I didn't write down what the items were, but there was like a Norma Kamali dress in there. There was like a pair of Aquatalia shoes. Like there was some good stuff in there and I got less than $10 an item. But wait, I also had some money into those items. So my cost of goods for those seven items was $24.23. So I actually ended up making a profit of $35.52 from items that I sent into the real reel in the month of July, which I received in August. That's really sad. I guarantee I would have made so much more money on those seven items had I sold them myself on reselling platforms. That's what's disappointing about the real real. And that's why I think I'm done. A lot of you had been telling me in the comments not to do it. A lot of you were like, don't sell on the real real. I get it. I just, you know, I want to like try things and experiment with things myself. And like I said, there were some things that I made really good money on from selling them at the real real that I would not have made had I, you know, listed them myself. So that's the trade off. Like you get some winners, but you get some real poopers as well. Like I did, you know, that's, that's what happens. Like I said, this Monday, I also had a whatnot sale. It was a combination of things. It was a combination of things that I had got at like the Goodwill outlet in Seattle, as well as stuff that I had purchased at that consignment store when they had their birthday sale. So I sold 26 items for $172. That was my gross sales amount. But once you factor in like cost of goods and whatnots fees, I actually made a net profit from that sale of $69.45, which was not huge. But again, I was, like I said, selling stuff that I found at the Goodwill outlet. It was fun stuff like, you know, like a Sesame Street t-shirt or like Gap overalls. I don't know. Like it wasn't like big ticket, like huge items. It was just fun stuff. Like it was just fun stuff that I was okay to sell for like five, eight dollars because I picked it up for so cheap. So that was my Monday. Moving on to Tuesday, which was August 16th on Poshmark. I sold this Tommy Hilfiger green, white striped button up shirt in a women's size 12. That sold for $15, which I was surprised by because I did not think that this could sell for that much. I had $3.92 into it from that wholesale palette. So I made a profit of $8.08. .08. I didn't really want to list it, but I just sucked it up and did it anyways and made some money off of it. The next thing to sell was this Banana Republic blue and white striped shirt dress in a size six. This sold for $21 with discounted shipping because of Pasha VA. This also was in that wholesale palette and this actually sold freakishly fast. Like I want to say within a couple of days and I made a profit of $11 and 16 cents on that. I, to be honest, probably would not have purchased that myself at the thrift store, but I was surprised at how well it sold. So I don't know, maybe if I find nicer career dresses from Banana Republic, I'll start picking them up again, knowing that they can do okay. They, they can sell pretty quick. The next thing to sell was this pair of Ugg Gray Classic Short fur-lined booties in a size eight. These sold for $35 and someone who used to go to my church actually gave them to me for free. So I made a profit of $28. It's crazy actually, because I've started to see the impact that my reselling has had on people in my life. So um, I went to a different friend's wedding this past weekend and it was just really crazy because um, I was talking to someone at that wedding who was telling me that his sister-in-law, you know, has gotten super into reselling because of me and just makes really good money doing it. Um, you know, a lot of my friends have started reselling after learning about what it even is through me. Um, I don't know. Like, I think that's really cool. Like some parents of like my students have started reselling. It's really cool. It's really cool to see that um, even locally, I, I'm having that impact just as people see 
the little success that I have with it and wanting to, you know, replicate some of that in their own lives. I think that that's really cool. And you guys know that I live in a pretty small town. Like we don't have a ton of thrift stores. We don't have a ton of places to source, but even with more people in my area learning about reselling, I still find great stuff every time I go to the thrift store. I still find great stuff every time I go to my local honey holes, even though a lot of people know about them now. Um, I just think that there's space for all of us as resellers. Even as more and more people join the reselling game, every day that new people join, there are also people who kind of hang up their hats and they're like, this isn't for me anymore. So I don't know. I think there's space for everyone. I think it's really cool that a lot of people are doing it. And the reason I share that is because this particular pair of Ugg boots came to me from someone, like I said, who used to go to my church. Um, she is the daughter of my friend. She just graduated from high school and brought me all this stuff because she is going to college. I think she's actually already moved in and has started classes. Um, but she was reselling like her junior and senior year of high school because she had learned about it from me. And I just think that's so cool. It's so humbling. And I don't know, it just blows my mind. So that was really special to learn that. But obviously she did not want to take all of this stuff with her to her dorm room. So she just gave them to me as kind of a thank you for, you know, the knowledge that I've passed on to her. And I made $28 as a result. So Thank you if you're watching, and I hope that you are killing it in college. The next thing to sell was over on Facebook Marketplace, which was cool because Facebook Marketplace sales are few and far in between, but it was this pair of Echo brown leather Irving Fisherman sandals in a size 42, or so I thought. I got these at a local Goodwill. I paid $14.99 for them because they were basically brand new. They had never been worn. Echo is a great brand that I don't have like the best luck with, but I keep buying it. I keep picking it up. Um, so I was like, okay, they're brand new. I sold a pair of fisherman sandals like these a few weeks prior for like 60 bucks or like 65 bucks. And that was like a no name brand. So I was like, Echo, this style. Yes, I'm going to get them and I'm going to pay up for them a little bit got them home, realized that one shoe was a size 42 and the other one was like a 40 or something or like a 41. I went ahead and listed them anyway. I made it very abundantly clear in the listing that, you know, the shoes were different sizes. They still sold on Facebook marketplace for $40 and I made a profit of $22 and 42 cents. I list things with flaws. I list things that are, you know, shoes in two different sizes. They can still sell. I didn't even have to sit on them for too long. I think they were probably listed for a couple months. They still sold. So that just goes to show, even if things are not perfect, they can and will still sell. On Wednesday, August 17th, I sold this Chico's retro swirly print open sleeve shirt. It was like a very kind of 70s vibe, very like retro. This sold for $15 with discounted ship. I picked it up a long time ago in that big bulk buy that I did at that local consignment store for 80 cents. So I made a profit of $9.50. 48 cents. Um, Chico's can do well, and you're going to hear about some more Chico's here in a second. It can do well, but more basic pieces like this top, I don't pick them up. Not unless maybe they're at the bins or something, but you know, you're not going to be able to sell them for much more than $15. The next thing to sell was this new with tags, unique low dark gray satin dress in a size medium. And it had this like tie at the neck. This sold for $29 with discounted shipping. I only had a dollar into it because it's something that I picked up at a local consignment store during a size sidewalk sale. So I made a profit of $20 and 48 cents. Uniqlo doesn't retail for a ton to begin with. So I don't typically pick it up, but for a dollar and new with tags, I couldn't pass it up. And I thought I did pretty well for myself with that piece on August 18th, which was a Thursday on Poshmark. I sold another Chico's piece. It was this quilted paisley open front beige jacket in a size eight. I've had this forever too, but this was kind of the week of selling things that I've had forever. I will credit most of the reason as to why that is to Pasha VA because I, like I said earlier, I relisted a ton of stale listings, this being one of them. Like you're going to see a lot of things that I'm going to say, I've had this forever. And it's because I finally got to relisting it and it finally sold 
for like decent money. So this item sold for $22. I had 80 cents into it from that big bulk buy that I did over two years ago. And I made a profit of $16.80. So I made my money. I learned what pieces not to pick up from Chico's or from some of these other brands as well. But after relisting the item, I was able to finally make the sale. So if you are not relisting stale listings, what are you waiting for? There is a way to do it using List Perfectly. I just need to figure out a better system, but I use Posture VA for uh, Poshmark. I do like the end listing sell similar on eBay. On Facebook Marketplace, they make it pretty easy to renew listings or to delete and relist listings. There's a lot of ways that you can relist listings on a variety of platforms, and I definitely recommend relisting. This week was a testament to the power of relisting. On eBay, I think this was another item that I ended listing sell similar. It was this pair of Coach Black Leather Slip-On Driving Loafers in a men's size 10. I picked these up at the Goodwill outlet in Indianapolis, I want to say last summer, so I've had these for a while. Um, and I think the reason why they took so long to sell is because there was basically a hole like on the bottom of the shoe. And you know, most people don't want a hole in their shoes, but these finally sold for $25. I had a dollar and 27 cents into them from the Goodwill outlet. That was my average cost of goods per item for that trip. So I made a profit of $15 and 28 cents. Flawed items, things that are of two different sizes, they will sell, they will sell, list them and they will sell. On Friday, which was August 19th, this was another flawed item, another super old item, and another item that I think sold because of relisting. So it was this Royal Robins gray wool blend asymmetrical skirt in a size medium. I still remember wh like where I was when I got this. I was at a Goodwill. I remember like agonizing over if I should get this or not because I had heard YouTubers talk about Royal Robins and how it was a good brand, which it's okay. It's like a decent outdoor brand. Um, but I was like, I don't know, is this a good style? Like I didn't really look up comps, but I just remember like spending a lot of time and energy on this skirt, wondering if I should pick it up. Obviously I did because <laughs> I sold it. I sold it for $21. Um, I had I want to say $4 into it. Like, I want to say this is from like three years ago because I don't even have a record of how much I paid for it. I, skirts then at my Goodwill, I think they were, yeah, around like four or five bucks. I'm saying I had $4 into it. I made my profit of $11.08. I did not realize, I don't think until I got it home and photographed it, that there was actually a hole in the skirt. Just all kinds of things wrong with it. But it finally sold just took like three years and I made my $11.08. So there you go. On eBay, I sold this Express Blue Extra Slim Floral Print Button Up Shirt in a size small. This item sold for $10, which I, you know, I don't know, Button Up Shirt Express, lots of things about it that alluded to the fact that this was not gonna be a great sale, but I only had a dollar and two cents into it because I got it from a local reseller when I bought out her inventory. So I made a profit of $8.07. On Saturday, which was August 20th, I sold another Chico's piece. It was this non-iron blue and white striped button-up shirt in a woman's size eight. This actually sold fairly quickly. I think it had only been listed for about a month, if even that. It sold for $17. I had $2 into it from a Thread Up Rescue box that I did a long time ago. I just hadn't gotten around to actually listing the item until, you know, pretty recently. Um, I did offer discounted shipping on it because of Pasha VA, so I made a profit on that top of $9.88. And then on eBay, I sold this Eileen Fisher gray open knit sweater. It was in a women's size large and made of organic cotton. This sold for $39.99. I picked it up at a Goodwill near my in-laws when I you know, went to visit them not too long ago. I had $5.99 into it, even though it was like the older Eileen Fisher tag because it was a bigger size. I don't know. I thought it was a cool piece. It was organic cotton and I wasn't paying that much for it. I went ahead and picked it up and I thought it paid off. I made a profit of $26.90 on that sweater. And then finally on Sunday, which was August 21st, I had a really great sale on Poshmark. It was this Jude Connolly Ashlyn midi jersey dress in a size extra small. Jude Connolly, to me, it is kind of similar to Jay McLaughlin. Like their jersey knit fabric is kind of similar to the Catalina cloth that Jay McLaughlin uses. Um, I felt like I had this priced kind of high, but then it randomly sold at my full asking price after being listed for a few months. 
of $65. Um, this was an item that came in that wholesale palette. So I had $3.92 into it. Um, you know, the wholesale palette, there were some misses, like a lot of misses, like a lot of pieces that I pulled to just donate or to try and sell at a, uh, pop-up consignment sale because I just didn't think it was worth my time to photograph and list those items. But then there were some big winners too, like this piece, and I made a profit of $48.08. This piece I would have definitely picked it myself as well if I found it at like a thrift store or something like that, and I probably would have paid up to like $10, $15 for it. But it was also cool that it just got sent to me um, in that wholesale palette. I'll take it. The next sale was over on eBay. It was this pair of champion black and red nylon crinkle pull on logo shorts in a size medium for men. Those sold for $20. I picked them up at a local Goodwill for $4.99, knowing full well that comps were about $25-ish. I got an offer for $20 on eBay and I was happy to accept it. They'd been listed for a few months, so I made a profit of $12.32 on those. It wasn't like the best or smartest pick up by any means, but I just thought they were really cool. And sometimes I pick up things because I think they're cool or because I think they're cute and I'm okay with that. The next thing to sell was this loft navy and white polka dot three fourth sleeve crew neck sweater in a size small. This sold for $20. I got it for free from a friend. So I made a profit of $18 and 57 cents on that loft. I've said this before and I'll say it again. It'll sell it usually will take a while to sell and it won't sell for that much because everyone and their mom and their grandma is selling loft on places like Poshmark and eBay. But this one I was lucky, it wasn't listed for too long. The next sale was over on Kittizen. I think these sold in 24 hours. It was this pair of Boggs purple floral striped rain boots in a youth size 13. They were not in perfect condition. Um, there, you know, there was a lot of wear on them, but they still sold for my full asking price within 24 hours of $31.95. Now that was with free shipping. And if they were in better shape, I would have listed them for higher. But because like I said, they were kind of rough. I listed them for $31.95 free shipping. Ship. I had $6.91 into them because someone on Whatnot was selling two pairs of bogs um, as a lot and I got them for super cheap. So um, for the lot, I paid double $6.91. So what is that, like 13 something? I paid double $6.91. Um, so close to $14. That was for the price of the bogs plus shipping, which I think was pretty great. Like I think I only paid like two or three bucks for the bogs themselves and the majority of what I had to pay was shipping. So $6.91 into them, I made a profit of $11.91. The other pair of bogs were much more beat up. Like there are literal holes in them. So I don't know if I'm gonna get very much for those, but you know, I made a little bit of money, supported a fellow reseller on whatnot. I'm, I'm like satisfied with how everything turned out. And then on Facebook Marketplace, I sold this Walter Hagen blue hydro dry short sleeve golf polo shirt in a men's size extra large. This I got in that wholesale buyout for a dollar and two cents and it sold for 18 and so I made a profit of $15 and 71 cents. Golf attire is slowing down for me, but it is still selling. But what I learned this summer, especially from the local reseller whose inventory that I bought out, what I learned is that golf stuff can sell so well and that I should not turn my nose up at it, especially at the bins, or if I can get it for like a dollar or two, I should not turn my nose up at it because it sells very consistently and I can make anywhere from like a 10 to $20 profit easy on those items. So now that I know, I am passing that information on to you, but let's talk about my numbers for this week. So I'm not gonna tell you like how much I made on each platform just because this is already kind of a long video and um, I'm talking about two weeks worth of sales but what I will share with you is that if you don't include whatnot, I sold 27 items for a gross sales amount of $568.09. I had really strong weeks on Poshmark and eBay, I would say. Like eBay, not in the number of items that I sold, but the like price per item of items that I sold. But once you factor in fees and shipping discounts, that sort of thing, that total drops to $456.18. I had $86.03 as my cost of goods for those 27 items. And so I made a net profit from my online reselling platforms of $370.15. However, I did have that whatnot sale. So if you factor in that sale, that increases my net profit to $439.60. 
I mean, you know, in the year 2021, I would have said, that's not that great. And I mean, it's still not that great. Again, it's less than what I'm trying to make per week, but given how horrid this summer was, I've never experienced a summer slowdown like the year 2022. I'm really happy with these numbers. And I'm hoping that this is just the beginning of a steady incline of sales and numbers and all that kind of stuff. And I'm gonna ride that wave. I'm gonna ride that wave hard by doing a little bit more on my end as well. Listing more, um, just being more proactive about relisting like I shared. Yeah, just doing all those things because I think those are the things that can bring more sales in a time where more sales are happening. So that's how I did in like the middle of August. September has been looking pretty good. I'm excited about it. Let me know how your sales have been down in the comments below. And let me know if you are a firm believer in relisting as well. This, you know, two weeks that we're talking about has only strengthened my belief that relisting is an absolute necessity. If you're not doing it already, just try it out and see how it works out for you. See how many of those relisted listings sell. So thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button on your way out and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.